Thank you so much for coming. Um, I'm going to talk about the work and the work, how the work really come out, come about. But uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Aging Society um, for the wonderful opportunity of have six of us have work here, and then especially Bridget and her staff from Azo to Anna and uh, many others. And also thank to Chip, and especially to his mother, Nancy. And without her, I don't think we can make this come out this way. And then she really is the force and make this thing happen. I promise to Chip, if she comes to visit, I will make a special trip from Seattle down here. So, of course, um, Asian Society, all the supporters, donors, and uh, your generous support, which made this thing happen, and this exhibit, exhibition taking place. So, um, I teach at the University of Washington in Seattle, so um, not very far away, but not very close. Um, I think this exhibition is wonderfully put together which is relevant to today, and uh, we can remember um, William Faulkner pointed out, past is never dead, and uh, even it is not even past. So also the Odega uh, Gosset said, I am, I am my circumstances. So there's no way we can separate ourselves from the past, and pa our past is, is project or inference who we are and then what kind of life we live and then what kind of future we're gonna have. So my artwork, what I, can, I want to retreat back a little bit, always rele relevant to the society social change. In 1989, when I was at the Slade School study my second master's degree at the University College of London and Tiananmen Square, Tiananmen Square massacre took place. My work that time more in line with modernism, searching for beauty of Chinese art and try to combine uh, modernism into my work. However, that event shattered me from, interrupt my path. And I decided my work also should be an agent for social change. So in turn, I finished the five capital punishment piece regarding Chinese culture, which re-examined uh, the ancient culture relevant to today's society as well as today Chinese culture. So the, at the same time, we examined the capital punishment. So from flame, decapitation, fine squat, starvation, and drawing quartering. So all those pieces are 12 feet by 7 feet and try to re-exam the injustice, uh, unfairness, and disparity in the society. And by end of nine, eight, 2007, so I took up another project, which is the Chinese American experience. We all know in middle of eight, in 18, 50s, 60s, America embarked on the huge task of expansion to the West. And then initially, all the wagons took many of our forefathers, forerunners, come to the West side of this continent. But however, by mid of 1860s, and this nation decided to build the Transcendental Railway. So the here is Omaha, there's the Sacramento, and then Utah is here. So this structure is built by Chinese workers that's mainly Irish immigrants. So Chinese railway workers build 690 miles of a stretch of the railway. They work the day and the night, the most treacherous, difficult task, and then along, along the Construction, 1,200 of them perished. And this is the last image 
you can find about Chinese workers. So eight of them laid the last track and then piles and then finish it up and then they will disappear from the rest of the celebration. That time, on that very day, cross nation, every single church, every single city hall, every single uh, vehicle, if they have a vessels, bells, they all sound by 12.30 p.m. and celebrate across the nation. But, oh, I, I examined all the photos, there are no single Chinese among all the celebrations. So, this is a quite important event, 1869. That year, Suez Canal complete, and first Transatlantic Trans Railway built, and the first Transatlantic Cable was laid down. So, the technology, engineering, and um, bind it all together. And the American's GDP product um, production um, was skyrocketed 40% by 1875 and surpassed Britain to become uh, number one economic horsepower, uh, horsepower in, the, in the globe by 1882. So, however, right after the railway finished, or the subsequent railway was building, the, the xenophobic movement started, uh, which is perpetuated by 1880, 1872 Great re, uh, Recession. So, this is, a, I think this is a conjecture. Every single time today I heard a lot of those commentaries, regardless on which channel I don't want to mention. So that talking about the Mexicans, they took too much job from us, so we can do it, they cannot do it, they, they don't need to do it for us. I remember this cartoon. And also they were talking about too many immigrants. I will remember that time, uh, the cartoon in the 1860s, about Chinese gonna took over. And then today there were many political parties or affiliates and then talking about their goal is keep this country legal, and then I can remember uh, Dennis Connie talk the party called the Workers' Party, and then the only goal is to kick out the Chinese. And then when Chip mentioned 1882, which is year Americans' uh, gross uh, national product surpassed Great Britain, become number one in the world American passed the law, 1882, China Exclusion Act. So this graphic, you can show how many Chinese coming, 1882, barely three years later, the only 10 entered this country. So this is from, um, this is not only, there's so many um, violence, expulsions, I don't wanna have time to list all of them, I just give you a loan for California. Barely a dozen years, 200 events took place to kill Chinese, expel Chinese, and burn the Chinese house, and they did everything. So James Pfizer put out this book called Unforgotten War. Possible some of you can find it. <clears throat> and so I decided to trace the first steps, those Chinese workers and especially the most treacherous section of the entire journey from Auburn to Truckee. So this is the Nevada Sahara Mountain. So before my trip, I studied the, the map and then find out the location and cross-reference with local newspapers as well as historic photos. So this is called Bloma Cut the location, this is a photo in 1866. So, and then there's an old Chinese house called Ch Chinese Jiao's house. So this is this one over here. There are still remnants there. It's um, being abandoned. And then I want to hope a local government will restore and keep it as a historic site. And furthermore, the famous one called Cabo Horn. And uh, 
there's a famous campground called Burn Flat China Camp, where used to Chinese workers stay there, stationed there. So this is a photo, but this is a postcard that time, and then the historical photo. This is my drawing, a painting on site. And so I find those photos, find out the exact location where this bridge is over here. So this is the river bank, that is this corner. So track down, those workers used to be washing their clothes and cooking their food. And especially, this is the site, is tucked away, nobody will know, called Iowa Hill. And uh, there are many Chinese buried there, and special cemetery for Chinese. And also, we know the Donna Pass, Donna Party, but there were over 200 some Chinese died along the one winter stone and nearby Donna Summit because of the 40. Seven feet total snow accumulation of that very year, 1867, 68, 66, 67. So, um, I, I made two trips there one during summertime, another time when they're especially during December and, and the January, the very month they built the railway tunnel. So, <clears throat> like this rocks, I tracked down from the historic photo of the T carrier. The location they said the number tunnel, the location where exactly the spot, and this is a famous photo. In the beginning of the construction, this is a survey photo. This is during construction. This is I painted. That's one is a beer stud was commissioned by Pennington. Pen, uh, beer stud refused to paint the tunnel because he felt the Donner Lake is much more beautiful and refused to paint it. So I put in myself commissioned by Paddington and then paint the site. Exactly Paddington instruct the painter to work on. So this is a, <clears throat> everybody knows uh, where is the Golden Spike Promontory Summit, but they didn't know there's a called China Arch. It used to be called China Man's Arch, changed to Chinese Arch. So the location is, this is the Promontory Summit, barely a um, mile and a half away. There was close to 5,000 Chinese camped there. So this is a Golden Spike celebration site. That is where uh, China Arch, Arch was the campground. So also another body of work I want to review is how the work really come out by process-oriented abstract painting. So I use the, I did an experiment and uh, use the ground as a canvas, as a brush, to make the whole process working. So what you saw in the exhibition is lift out the print of the ground. So some of the pieces, they are not in the exhibit, uh, exhibition. Um, what is this about it? This is, a, oh, sorry. So this really is um, clothes, uh, nameless, hairless Chinese workers. Mm, I envision them two different ways. One, they standing there, stood there, and then work on the, the task. A second possible, they have all their clothes after work and then lay on the ground dry. So two different way to think about it. The possible <clears throat> dry clothes, a dirt from the gum powder or from the whatever, the dirt. On the other hand, can be blood because some of, some of the injured die, perish in the process. And this piece, I think I, I want to talk about it a bit more because this is also an untold story. In in early 1860s, um, many American steamers um, crossed Pacific Ocean, went to China, Hong Kong, pick up Chinese workers, cool, uh, coolies. They actually chained them in the 
lower compartment, treat them like slaves and ship over. Many of them died. Some of them died of dysentery or smallpox outbreaks on board or hunger and also malnutrition, whatever. Also, there was a rebellion took place and uh, in one of the islands on the nearby Philippines. And if you go there, they were they call it the cemetery, and close to 300 Chinese um, buried there. So um, this was, I think, was a total of close to 15 to 20 percent of the workers died, and on the during their journey from China to the United States. So discuss a little bit about the, the video piece downstairs. Sorry, a little bit long. So I'm a little bit too long to talk. So this video piece is based on this photo. And, uh, and this, I took the photo and then paint the bottom, project the video on the top. So the bottom portion is, um, never move, doesn't move because it symbolizes permanence. At the same time, has it ingrid, um, inscribed all the names of from the payroll of the railway company I discovered from Sacramento um, State Library. The color of the bottom white because try to maintain the funeral color, memorialize those people perished during construction. Um, the piece, the bottom audio is self, I made it myself, so. And I envision this piece eventually to become like that in my next exhibit. And this piece also taking another form of uh, installation, which is 45 feet to 50 feet cross, 25 feet tall, with real inscriptions on the rocks. Thank you.